Hi guys, it's Miss Jessica from Res Life Kids again. So glad you could join me this week. I'm super excited about what we're going to share. Are you ready? All right, let's get started. Now, do you remember last time we met, I had an Easter basket full of colored eggs. Don't worry, I don't have those eggs again. But I still think about all the colors and how they remind me about different characteristics of God. Okay, like for example, the color yellow. Yellow reminded me of the sun and it's warm and it's cozy and it reminds me of my home. And it also reminds me that God has a home for me in heaven. And that once my body leaves here, I will be present with God forever in heaven. And that's really cool to me. It's very comforting. And also the color green reminds me of new life, like the springtime we're in right now. The grass is green, the trees are blooming, the flowers are blossoming, right? It's new life. It's green. And it reminds me of the new life that Jesus gives me when I ask him to come and live in my heart and be my Lord and Savior. That when, again, when I'm here on this earth, I have a great time, exciting things happen. But also when I go to heaven, I can live with God forever. With Jesus, life is super exciting. Without him, it's okay. But with him, super exciting things happen. In fact, I want to show you this example, this little demonstration. I know a lot of you have seen it already, but it still speaks so much to me. It shows me so much that I'm okay without Jesus, but it's a lot more fun, a lot more exciting with him. So check this out. Wasn't that awesome? I love that experiment. It just shows me how exciting life can be with Jesus. Now, remember all those little tablets? They represent hanging out with Jesus, like praying, which is just talking to God, reading your Bible, worshiping, which is singing songs to God, um, just hanging out with him, talking to him all the time. And when you add those things to your life, just like we saw in the video, life gets a lot more exciting. Super cool. So after Jesus died... And he was buried and he rose from the dead. Before he went to heaven, he stopped to visit his buddies, his disciples, okay? And Jesus told them that he was going to leave them a helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit would be with us forever. And he is, just like God is, just like Jesus is. Even though we can't see him, he's here with us, okay? And many people ask, well, how do we know that he's with us? We can't see him. Well, again, we go back to the example of the air. How do we know it's there? We need the air to breathe. We're breathing, aren't we? We see the effects of the air and the wind. We see the trees moving. We feel it on our faces. So we know that God is with us by seeing the effects of the Holy Spirit in our lives, okay? So for example, again, that blue egg reminded me of the sky, and it reminds me that God is always here even though we can't see him, right? We need God to live just like we need the air. So I'm going to show you another little demonstration that reminds us of how, even though we can't see the Holy Spirit in our hearts, in our lives, we can see the effects and how much we need God. Check this one out now. All right, so you see this bottle? This represents us, okay? It's a nice little water bottle. It has water in it. It's clear. It's kind of sparkly. It's doing its thing. It's ready for some fun, Okay. The balloon here represents our heart. It's busy, just hanging there, doing its thing, pumping some blood. It's kind of exciting. Eh, kind of, but not super, right? It's just doing its thing. But inside our heart is the Holy Spirit, is Jesus. Can I see it? No, I just see the heart. I just see the person. But inside, when we ask Jesus to live in our hearts, Jesus comes in, the Holy Spirit comes in and stays with us forever. And just like we said before, we can't see God, but we can see the effects of God. So let's check it out now. Here's us. Here's our heart. Inside our heart is the Holy Spirit. We can't see him, but let's see the effects of the Holy Spirit on our lives. You ready? I'm just going to hold it up here and I'm going to tip it up. And here we go. Check it out. Whoa. Wow, that's amazing. Look at that fill up. That's just like God in our lives. He fills us with his love. He fills us with so much joy, so much energy, so much excitement. Just like this balloon is filled with all of this excitement and joy. That's the way the Holy Spirit is in our life. Isn't that cool? It's still going. Right? We couldn't see the Holy Spirit in there, but we certainly saw the effects when we let him do his thing. 
And I love that bubbling sound. All right, I'm going to put that over here for a minute. All right. So isn't that cool? I love that at demonstration. I absolutely love it. Now, how do we know that Jesus is in our life? Well, guess what? People will be able to tell. They'll see a difference. You'll be happier. You will be more obedient. You'll be kinder. You'll say nicer words. You won't be pushing people around or being a bully. Um, you won't be disrespectful as much. Now, let me remind you, people will notice, okay? But we will make mistakes because we're human. But let me encourage you, try not to do them anymore. It's okay. We do make mistakes. God knows. He has grace and mercy for us. But we just have to not do them again. We have to try really, really hard, okay? And when we have the Holy Spirit in our heart, we're going to want to do the things that God tells us to do, like pray, which is talking to him, and worship, which is singing, and reading our Bible, because it's our rule book. It's our guidebook. It's what's showing us the way. And going to church. Going to church is important because there's other people there who love Jesus, and they, we can learn from them, and we can create good friendships from those people. But let me remind you, all those people at church are not perfect. No one's perfect except for God. So don't go to church expecting to see all these perfect people because people will make mistakes. And it's okay. They're learning too. We don't expect you to be perfect. I'm not perfect. We all make mistakes. So we have to not only forgive others, we also have to forgive ourselves. And that's hard for a lot of people. Sometimes we're really hard on ourselves when we make a mistake. But don't be too hard on yourself. Give yourself some grace and mercy. Okay, so like our demonstration show today, we can't always see God, but we will see the effects of God in our lives. And people will notice when Jesus lives in your heart, they'll see what a great person you are. And it's okay to make mistakes. Just try really hard not to do them again. Okay, all right, so let's pray right now. We're going to ask God to help us to do the right thing and help us to be a stronger Christian. Dear God, I thank you for always being there to help me. I know you are here with me even when I can't see you. Thank you for helping me share your love and for helping me to be a better person. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Excellent. Thank you guys again for joining me today. It's been a real blast. I'm praying for you to have a great week. And I'm praying that you find ways to show others in your family that you love them and that Jesus lives in your heart by being a better helper, by being kinder, and by being more obedient without an attitude and being, and being respectful to your family. All right, guys, I love you. I'll see you next week. Have a wonderful time. Maybe you can even do that little experiment on your own. I'll leave the directions after this video. Bye, guys. Hi Res Life students, Miss Kimber here again. I miss you lots and lots 
and until we can all be together again I'm super glad that we can hang out together like this just a little bit so we've spent the last couple of times together talking about what was happening after Jesus's resurrection right what did he do where did he go who saw him did you know that after he resurrected he was seen in person many times and by about 500 total people wow so we have all of those eyewitness testimonies to prove that he's alive we're gonna look at another one of those times today I want you to think back to last week do you remember that Jesus had appeared to his disciples while they were locked together in a room, right? And he had shown Thomas his hands and his side. Well, on a day not long after that, Peter decides, I'm going fishing, right? Maybe he was restless. Maybe he just needed to get away for a while and do something familiar, clear his head. So Peter and six more of his disciple buddies head out to the Sea of Galilee. You can read all about this in John chapter 21. But first I want you to imagine what it was like. So when the fishermen would fish, they would actually do it at night because that's when it was easier to catch the fish. So stop and think for a minute close your eyes imagine if you will it's nighttime they're out on the Sea of Galilee there's some mountains off in the distance and during the night by the light of the stars they're taking these huge heavy nets and they'd work together and throw them into the water and haul them back in hopefully full of fish right well they fished all night. They'd throw that net and pull it back in, throw it out, pull it back in, throw it out, pull it back in. And each time, nothing, not a empty net. And then early in the morning, something amazing happened. Let's check it out together. We're going to start reading in verse 4, John chapter 21, verses 4 to 6. Here we go. Early in the morning, Jesus stood on the shore, but the disciples did not realize that it was Jesus. He called out to them, friends, haven't you any fish? No, they answered. He said, throw your net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. When they did, they were unable to haul the net in because of the large number of fish. From there, Peter realizes it's Jesus. He gets it. He's just experienced a miracle and he knows how Jesus operates. He picks up his, his cloak and because he's, he's so excited, he jumps into the water and heads right for Jesus on the shore. Well, the other disciples, they bring the boat in. They're not far away, only about 100 yards. They bring that boat in and they start hauling that net full of fish to come in and meet him on shore. What do they find when they get to the beach? A fire burning with fish cooking, sizzling over the fire. Let's look at that in verses 9 to 13. It says, when they landed, they saw a fire of burning coals. There was fish on it and some bread. Jesus said to them, bring some of the fish you've just caught. So Simon Peter climbed back into the boat and dragged the net ashore. It was full of large fish, 153. But even with so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. None of the disciples dared ask him, who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came, took the bread, and gave it to them, and did the same with the fish. There are three key points that I want you to remember about this really special breakfast on the beach. First, think about how long did it take Jesus to prepare breakfast? Can you picture him gathering the driftwood, some kindling, some branches, starting that fire, letting it grow into a flame, and then cooking the fish 
if you've ever started a fire before in a campfire, you know it takes a little while, right? Well, all that time, while Jesus is preparing that fire and cooking those fish, the disciples are out there throwing their nets and hauling them in over and over and over and getting nothing. But Jesus is cooking breakfast. He knows they're tired and hungry. And he already knows that he's going to tell them to throw their net in again. He knows they're going to have a huge catch. And when they did, they had a catch that amazed them, right? So many huge fish, they were stunned that the net didn't break. Well, all that time, while Jesus is building that fire and cooking those fish, he's preparing a blessing for them. That's our first point. In that same way, Jesus has amazing, wonderful blessings prepared just for you. My second point is, what did the disciples have to do to get the blessing? They had to listen to his voice. He called out to them, friends, do you have any fish? Throw your net on the right side of the boat. He called out to them, just like Jesus speaks to you. Now, sometimes Jesus' voice comes from reading the Bible. Sometimes it's in the wise counsel of someone who knows him, maybe a parent or pastor or teacher. Sometimes it's that internal gut check where you just know, or it's that, that quiet voice that urges you in your, in your heart and that you know how to do and what to do and what the right choice is. You get that when you pray too. One of my favorite descriptions, our friend Miss Eileen likes to say, you just know it in your knower. I think that's a fun description of how you know Jesus' voice. So point number two, you have to listen to Jesus' instructions. And that brings me to my third point. Think about those instructions. Jesus' instructions were pretty odd, right? Throw your net on the right side of the boat. <laughs> the disciples in the boat could have thought, yeah, right, sure. And they probably did for a second, didn't they? They were tired. They'd been throwing that net, net in all night long. What could one more time get them? They'd been coming up empty the whole time. And think about this. In their own sense, did throwing the net on the right side of the boat make any sense? Not really. Fish can swim, right? They would have swum under the boat, around the boat. The water currents move. Should it really matter what side of the boat the net is on? No way. But they did it. They listened to his voice and they took action and they followed his instructions. If they hadn't, they would have come up with empty nets. But when they followed his instructions, they got a massive blessing of so many fish, they were amazed the net didn't break, right? Well, it's the same way for you and for me and for all of us. Sometimes God asks us to do something really simple and we don't even imagine the effect it will have. Maybe it's something like mowing the neighbor's lawn or smiling at someone or saying thanks to a teacher who's been working really hard to teach you online these past several weeks. Sometimes he asks us to do something that doesn't make any sense in our own understanding. Maybe he asks us to be nice to the meanest kid in the class. Or sometimes he asks us something that we're really reluctant to do. Maybe it's share your lunch with someone, clean your room before your mom asks, or give something away. No matter what it is, no matter what Jesus asks you to do, listen carefully and do it. Take action. Follow Jesus' instructions and you'll be blessed more than you can imagine. So let's remember our three key points for breakfast on the beach. Jesus has lots of blessings that he's prepared for you. You have to listen to his voice, right? While you're reading the Bible, praying, listening to that voice inside, and you have to take action and follow his instructions. Now I've got a fun activity for you to help you remember this amazing breakfast on the beach. 
try this out the next time you are making maybe french toast or some pancakes cut them into the shape of a, of a fish right you can decorate the room and pretend you're on the beach by a campfire <laughs> I don't know maybe stick them on your fork like like you'd hold a stick over the fire <laughs> but take those fishy French toast and fishy pancakes and remember Jesus who loves you so much and the amazing blessings that he has prepared just for you let's take a minute and pray about that Jesus we just thank you that you have planned for us and you have planned incredible blessings that you you are uh, Jesus who loves to just bless on us and shower us with your love and we thank you for that Lord Lord we ask you that we would listen to your voice we would hear you clearly and know in our hearts when you're speaking to us and that Lord you would prompt us to take that action and follow through because we want to do what's pleasing to you and we thank you so much, Jesus, that you talk to us personally like that. And you have wonderful things for us to do to show people your love. And that, Lord, you just love to bless us back in return. Thank you, Jesus, for your love. Amen. All right, you guys. I love you all. I will see you next time. Miss ya.